I recently posted a video on white balance as a new rendering feature in Blender 4.3. In this video, I've decided to post just the examples of white balance from that video. A lot of people only watched up to about the five minute mark of the original video, probably because many people aren't super interested in the theory. So this video is just the examples of white balance, but without the theory section, so you can get right into seeing what it does and how to use it. If you want to understand the theory behind white balance, watch the full original video. So we spent a lot of time looking at theory and let's jump in now and take a look at a real world example here in Blender 4.3. So we're going to come over, over here into the render properties and we're going to come down to the bottom where we have color management and you'll note that we have a new white balance entry. Before we do anything with that, we're going to take a look at the two lights that we have in the scene. So I've got two area lights, one that is labeled 4000K and the other that is labeled 8000K. So if you've guessed, that's obviously the black body temperature that I have assigned for the color of each light. So we can clearly see with the coloration of these two lights that we have warm on the left and a cooler on the right because of these black body temperatures. If we come down, we can see that there is a new entry for white balance. It's not turned on, but it is showing the default. If you remember, Blender uses the Illuminate D65 as its internal white balance default. So when you open old files, it's compatible. Nothing changes until we turn on the white balance. So this temperature of 6502 and the tint of 9.8 are the values for the Illuminate D65. So we have sort of this mid-grade white balance between these two colors. So let's come over and change the white balance by shifting to one of the different illuminants. So let's start with the luminant D50. Remember, D50 is going to have a Kelvin range around 5000. You want to think about this from the standpoint of 5000 being the value that you essentially want to neutralize, that you want to become more neutral. Since 5000 is on the warmer side, we're essentially going to neutralize the warmer values. So when we click Luminant D50, that's exactly what we get. We get the warmer tones neutralized and the bluer values on the opposite side become more prominent. So let's do the opposite, but let's sort of reset our visual palette by going back to the default of Illuminant D65. We'll come back and we'll go to Illuminant 93. 9300 is on the much, much bluer side, the cooler side of that black body axis. So that is what it's going to neutralize is those cooler terms. And it emphasizes then the opposite values, which are the warmer tones. So let's really drive this point home. Let's come over and reset back to our basic Illuminant D65, which is the default neutral. And we want to take each of these lights and really emphasize them. So I'm going to take the cooler up to 9000. Coolers tend to be a little bit less prominent. The warmer side tends to be more dominant in terms of the color. So we'll come over here to the 4000 and let's take this down to 3000, which will really warm that up. So we've got a lot of contrast between these two. Let's move away from using a preset. We're going to manually adjust temperature and tint. So let's, let's remove an influence from tint. So we're not having any shift along that magenta green axis. And we're going to take temperature and match exactly the 3000 that we have for the emitting warm light. And remember that will neutralize that to become white. And then that's what we get. So right up here, we get that white, but remember it shifts the other side to become more prominent, which is exactly what we see. Now let's also do a quick examination of this tint value using the manual 6500K as our neutral white point, which is what we have set here. So let's come down to tint and let's give it a positive value of 20 and see what that effect has. So you can see it gave it just a little bit more of a magenta hue to it. Now let's take it back down to zero so we can clear our visual palette. And then let's give it minus 20, which will shift it a little bit to the green. So that's exactly what this tint function does. It's this balance between magenta and green. So this is pretty basic, but let's take a look at some more sophisticated examples in more real world scenes. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. In this first one, it's a rendering of this kitchen scene and it's using D65. 
There are a lot of these warm lights, so obviously the tonality of the scene has warmth, but there's also an exterior HDRI that it's an outdoor light, and so there's a little bit of the blueness coming from that outdoor light. If we go to D50, this is what we get. So we've sort of neutralized the warmer tones and given more cool appearance to the overall rendering. But we could go in the other direction too. Let's come back here to D65, the neutral, and then go in the opposite direction where we have D93 and it really warms up and we lose some of the bluer tones. So this is the kind of thing that you can use with white balance from an artistic standpoint. So let's take a look at this same scene. We're back with D65. So what happens if we take this up to manually set it to 6500 Kelvin, but a tint of minus 35, which is going to go in the green direction, we get this. Well, let's do something else. Let's manually take it to 5000 Kelvin, but with a tint of 15, which moves us in the direction of magenta, and we get that. And then finally, let's keep it at 5000 Kelvin, but go back to a negative 35 on tint, and we end up with that. So this is what's really kind of cool about this white balance function, is you can really change the artistry of your image by playing with these values. Let's take a look at another example. Here's another good example. Here's a rendering with D65, the default. But what if I want to neutralize just a little bit of the blue in the scene? So we would go to D75 and we get this. So we've warmed it up just a little bit. But when I look at this, I think, you know, maybe there's just a very, very subtle hint towards the green direction that I'd like to neutralize. So I'm going to manually add the tint to 22. D75 has a native tint of almost 10, so by taking it to 22, we move it in the magenta range, and we get this. So there was just that subtle hint towards the magenta, which I kind of like. But let's go back to D65, our default. What if we want to go in the opposite direction? Maybe we'd like to make this a little bit cooler, so I'm going to take it to D55, and we get this. And I actually kind of like this. To me, there's something really interesting about the cooler tones on this black wall. So here's another example. This is another interior example that has very warm lights. All the lighting in the scene, with the exception of a little bit of outdoor lighting, comes from these very warm low Kelvin lights in the lamps, for instance, and some other light sources. So we're using D65. As soon as we shift over to D50, it neutralizes that just a little bit. But what if we take it even a step further and go down to 4200K manually and increase the tint to 12, which is just a little bit, then we get that. So it's just a little bit more of the magenta, but then if we go to tint zero with 4200, we get something that again is even a little bit more neutral. But if then we decide that we want to keep the 4200, but then take the tint to minus 12, it'll shift a little bit green, we get this. So changing these values in just subtle ways can really help you to change the appearance of your scene. So let's look at one final example. We have this rendering, and in this particular case, we're going to start off with D55, which is going to make it just a little bit cooler. Then let's take a look at D65, the default, and we get that. It's a little bit warmer. I kind of like that. But let's examine what D75 is, which will make it even a little bit warmer. I like that too. But I think maybe I'm going to go back to this mid D65. But what if I want to adjust the tint to see what would happen if I take the tint in either direction? The default tint of D65 is at a value of 10. So if I take it to a value of negative 10, then we get this. Oh, well, that really changed the characteristic. Let's test what happens if we go in the other direction and give it a tint of 20 towards magenta. We get this. So this will give you a real sense about what you can do with changing the characteristics of your renderings just by playing with the white balance.